Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with Avatar The Last Airbender book 3 episode number 5 and 6. Okay, the previous two episodes, um, episode number 3 was the whole episode with the Painted Lady where we see how Katara is, um, doesn't want any more people, like, not, doesn't want any more people to suffer and to turn her back on others even though she realizes that yeah, these people are suffering. Just because they are on a different mission doesn't mean that yeah she won't help them so we kind of see that but at the same time we also kind of understand that like Saka's point of view where Saka says that we are really going way like you know like running out of time and we need to defeat uh fire lord if we actually want peace so it's kind of like a thing like you know like where's like there's like the greater good and there's like like you know small little goods so you can't judge both of them you can balance them both so yeah it was like a nice little episode there katara helped the people and yeah everything kind of went it in a happy way and then comes the fourth episode where which was like you know at least my personal favorite episode where we see how saka and like you know iroh like both of them are really great characters i love both of them like you know, saka and iroh both of them and saka definitely needed a little bit of character development he already had like you know he in the team he was basically the brains of the team but still we needed a little bit of character development and we got it saka is able to actually uh, use a sword now and he's pretty good at it so we saw how he uses you know his um out of the box thinking to and applies it to swordsmanship and it was really great to see him develop little by little and uh iroh was just amazing <laughs> like iroh like nothing else to say we all know like we all know and we all love iroh and iroh has always been such a great character and episode 4 probably boosted up that character development like off through the roof and he's just great now i'm looking forward to how what we like you know what what he does after this so yeah so yeah that was that and that was the two episodes so let's see what these two episodes brings so without further ado let's get started this is episode number five of after the last airbender book three so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay so here's the countdown three Two, one, go. <coughs> okay. Oh. Okay. We're almost coming to the end of the. So this is okay. I'll take it off in case that there's some spoilers. So as I was saying, we're almost at the end. Uh, which episode is this? this is the fifth episode, fifth sixth. Uh. I'm sure book 3 also has 20 episodes so yeah we're kind of half point there so wow like huh, this is a great journey I'm loving this like this, at, after it gets better as like you know the episodes go on okay here we go the beach okay whoa Ember Island. What the hell? After has a beach episode? <laughs> okay, that's why. This is a beach episode. Oh my god. What happened to Zuko? His hair is all unkept and everything. He's. My god, he's having a mental breakdown. Oh, these two lady, we know them. <laughs> Wait, what? That's the... 
the great fire lords it looks great from in the inside but what the hell oh are they <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. Oh, that'll help Zuko, I guess. Huh. Um Oh my god, what the... <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Um... And... Okay, this is like a water slide. <laughs> Hopefully... Uh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Hide your tattoos, Zhang. Eng! Oh my god. These guys. Oh, great. Oh no. God. Oh my god. Uh, just as Toph said. Damn, this is like a tourist. Great, Azula. Why? Huh. <laughs> What? <laughs> Great. E <laughs> Go on. Um Oh, <laughs> stupid girls. Okay. Um. Oh no, Azula's up to no good again. Damn. God, what? This episode is kind of. I don't know, weird in a way? Like. Suddenly. Yeah. I, I have no words. Whoa! God. Ah! Wow. Oh, damn. God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't care. Ooh. And I'm... <laughs> My god, Azula's going to <laughs> burn the party down. I can I can see that happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, definitely revealed the true Azula very nicely. We we saw what she is. She just wants to see destruction. Oh, thank God. I don't know who this bird is. Just, just, yeah. Just take that thing away. Oh, boy. Nice. Whoa! Oh my god! This is... This is worse, I guess. Oh, the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah No. My god, this is a weird episode. I... <laughs> yeah. Zuko, oh my god. Everyone's on the edge. What is happening? Guys. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh my god, Azula's mad. Okay, come on. <laughs> Boy, Azula! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, no, don't do that again, ever again. <laughs> Please. Well, wow, these two are just amazing together, I can see. Oh, great. Haha.
Great. My God. Um. Great. Yes. This episode is so out of what can I say? Like I don't know how I can explain it. Like the previous episode and this episode, it looks so out of place. I'm having. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm enjoying this episode, but still. <laughs> oh great! Here we go. Oh. Okay. Mm. Well, well, you guys are the reason for it. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, great. Oh boy. Yeah, like in a way they are actually the reason for this, you know, for Zuko being like this. Like his uncle is not here, nothing. Like, oh boy, I feel bad for him and at the same time he brought this up on himself. So he needs to realize everything and I'm sure he will actually. It'll take a few more episodes probably. Just leave Zuko, like these people. Come on, go to your uncle, apologize, and just like leave. Oh. What the? Oh, okay. I wonder what happened, like the dad became... Was he like this from the beginning? He genuinely don't, does not like Zuko, I... I don't know. Oh no. Oh no, he's here, oh boy. Yeah, this guy is strong. I can, I can, like, you know, you. Oh my god, he is, he looks very strong. Oh. Run. Whoa! He, this guy, he has his third eye. Like, I know, like, it's, it's, it's firebending, but still. He's like Lord Shiva. My God. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> God. Damn, I like Saka's new hairstyle. Okay. My god, oh. He's just standing and...
Oh my god. This guy's bad news. Okay, he really that's not is that firebending? He really it seems he really is like shooting from his third eye. Whoa. Oh. That's a tattoo, isn't it? That's not a... Not a tattoo, that's a painting. The third eye. Um... Oh! 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 Okay, nice. Run. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of things to burn. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Zuko. Oh boy. <sighs> um okay oh, oh. oh boy Oh my god. <clears throat> yeah. Oh boy. Zuko, oh boy. Oh my god, these people. Ugh. I don't think Zuko cares about his skin. <laughs> <laughs> My god. Yeah. You're angry at yourself. Oh god. <clears throat> no, yourself. <clears throat> yourself. Oh boy. Ah. <sighs>
Oh god, Sazula! Well, yeah, it actually did. Yeah, burn everything down. Yeah. God. <laughs> wow, what what a nice picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, God, this episode I I don't know <laughs> I don't know what to say. Now, uh one thing, you know, like at the beginning as far like you know, as I as much as I was thinking like this episode is so out of place. Uh, by the end of it, I was able to realize that nah, they're actually trying to like you know, the the first po po portion of the episode was basically kind of like the wind up before the actual uh, thing that they wanted to tell us, wanted to express, and the the beginning of the episode was really weird. I have to say, like it it was so random and so unusual seeing, like like <laughs> like this is Avatar, like the way we've seen everything. If suddenly like a beach episode comes in where all these different characters like Azula who like you know who, tr who tries to like you know frame his brother like trap his brother and these different characters who are like plotting something all the time if they suddenly like start like acting like some kind of a slice of life rom-com character it 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 really was like caught me completely off guard and <laughs> like how they you know, like it, it really showed us in a way that how how detached they are to the normal life, you know, because <clears throat> like if, if this was like a normal, like, you know, like a different type of a show, uh, a different anime where like, you know, just like the different animes we see where there's like a beach episode and everything, everything kind of goes normal, you know, but here we see these characters, if they are like thrown into a situation like that, if they're thrown into a slice of life episode suddenly how they'll act they are awkward as hell each and every one of them in their own way they're awkward and they they don't know what to do like azula's plotting to actually destroy the different people who are actually playing beach volleyball and like you know i don't know what the hell zuko was <laughs> doing <laughs> like so random and so weird and it really tells like shows us how all these different four different characters who we have like you know all this time who we have seen through the lens of uh, uh what can i say mm. through the lens of uh like you know a different type of uh, like we, we always th saw saw them as like villains you know like except zuko like obviously zuko is a different type of a character he has been kind of shifting from a good guy to a bad guy a good guy to a bad guy he, he he's still kind of shifting is we still don't know what he'll actually be by the end of this show but all the other different characters we have always seen them as a villains in this show so <coughs> suddenly seeing that they are also basically children who are awkward as hell and don't know what the hell to do if they are thrown into a normal situation like this where we go to the beach have fun like we see what how out of place they are and this really like you know like made us realize that all of them all of them are actually victim of the circumstances in a way azula as well like okay so uh all these okay so let's like talk about this step by step uh first of all we see how like you know azula as always like you know is plotting the demise of each and every character that he she sees you know she sees some random people playing beach volleyball she's like oh we're going to burn them down we're going to defeat them <laughs> like everything is under our control 
uh, that's Azula we can see that then Mai is like nonchalant doesn't like you know nothing actually matters to her she's just like sitting like Zuko's trying so much to actually like I was actually surprised to see that Zuko was actually actively trying to get on her good side like I really was not expecting that I never thought Zuko to be a character like that but it seems he she really is trying to actually get to Mai's good side and actually have a like try to have at least a decent conversation but but Mai is really unstable in a way you know like if, for example in, like you know one of the previous episode where we see Zuko kind of says like you know that oh like what did he say something about his past or something he was talking about in some kind of a philosophical sense and Mai is like ah why do I care why are you telling me this and Zuko's all like you know like that like and then like sometimes we also see like Mai actually does kind of like you know listen to Zuko but at sometimes she doesn't really care about anything like she's unstable in that way and we see how like you know especially in this episode how she's so nonchalant nothing actually like you know matters to her and Zuko is so trying so much trying to actually like you know con converse with her and obviously we can see Tai Li like you know like she she's always like you know very much uh, expressive and as we see her and she likes attention and everything so these are the different type of characters we have here they are in a beach where they have no idea how to interact with people and how to act as like as children their age should act and yeah it's, it's a recipe for disaster and then they go to the party where again we get to see their characters out Azula's like, oh, like I want to be popular. I'm like, you know, I'm jealous of Tai Li because she gets so much attention, and that's why, like, to, like, you know, like, uh, to get that out of her system, she, she actually belittles and bad, bad mouths in a way Tai Li, and Tai Li's crying and everything, and then she says that, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just jealous, and she doesn't actually know how to interact with people. That's what we saw like all this time she she like <laughs> she has been so involved in actually plotting everyone's demise that she doesn't know how to interact with people so that and then we see my kind of like you know as always nothing actually matters to her she just wants everyone to leave her the alone and everything and Zuko's always trying to actually appease her and Zuko's getting kind of defensive whenever he, he sees someone actually come and talk to Tai Li because of his whole problem of like you know like he has this problem Zuko has this problem of uh, which is definitely not his fault like you know because his dad never cared about him and like you know he the only person who actually cared about him his uncle is now a prisoner because of his own fault and his uncle also doesn't listen, listen to him now so he has this kind of a fear that yeah like no one loves me you know everyone's like you know against me or something like he he has this thing and that's why whenever he sees someone go to Mai and talk to Mai he gets defensive he's like oh you like him more than me haha <laughs> like you know like uh, all that stuff like he he's getting petty like that so and then Mai is like leave me the hell alone like complete chaos no one is actually in sync <laughs> Like it's so weird to actually see this episode how everyone is like you know like thinking of so many many different things and none of them are at sync and it as the uh, old uh, like you know those two old ladies said that this beach really brought out everything that these characters had in them and each and everything and it showed us the like you know the the parts that they are insecure about themselves and then like you know we see how azula kind of tries to like you know <laughs> tries to kind of talk with that guy i forgot his name but then she's like oh we'll like you know we'll be the best we'll rule everything and everyone <laughs> <coughs> and zuko gets angry like you know <coughs> starts causing chaos mai is like leave me alone i don't want to see you we are done and you know Zuko goes back to the house and he remembers his dad and mom and now I wonder really do wonder was his dad really like this from the beginning because it seemed as if he 
he really did care about him at the, at the, at the beginning like you know in the family fought and in the flashbacks we see where he's kind of his hand is on him so i don't know what happened what was the trigger to this whole thing but i'm sure we'll get to know <clears throat> okay that was all happening and at that time at the same time the whole thing with ang was also happening where we see they're just trying to rest but then ang's tattoo gets exposed they now this one thing that i think is actually a good outcome is that the 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 bird that they attached the message to that ang is alive it got caught by the the other guy's bird so it it won't go to you know, the fire lord like that's a good thing like it's it's with him and he's actually trying to defeat ang <clears throat> the guy is strong and <clears throat> I'm sure that was actually fire burning, but it seemed as if the beam, like, you know, the fire beam was actually coming from his painted uh, third eye. I think that was painted. Most, Yeah, that is definitely painted. That is not a third eye. So, interesting. Like, it's kind of like, you know, like, he, he is kind of like Lord Shiva in a way, where, you know, like, the third eye just uh, destroys everything. Um, and, you know, like, like the, the, the thing that he was, the beam kind of thing that he was, uh, bringing out of his third eye it looked like it was coming out of the third eye but i doubt that it was coming out of it i'm I, i'm sure it, it was some kind of fire bending so yeah and he looks strong he 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 barely even touched anyone he just used his fire bending to like you know scare all like you know the angst crew away like he looks strong like in and i'm sure he's very strong close combat as well like just look at him like his build so what can I say? Like strongly and has like a metal arm or something. Like damn, he's very cool looking. <laughs> and uh, boy, I think he'll be a tough challenger for Aang's uh, crew. But anyways, I'm sure we'll get to see know about him more. But then again, we go back to <clears throat> um, Azula's crew. And here everyone kind of brings out everything that they're insecure about, that they had to go through. Tylee says how he was like she was like uh like you know like just like she did not want to become a part of a set and that's why she like you know like tries to be someone unique that's why like you know she wants more attention all that stuff and in a way it's kind of sad and messed up think about it it's, you know like how like okay here's the portion just a sec uh it was like I didn't have my own name. I joined the circus because I was scared of spending the rest of my life as part of a match set. At least I'm different now. Circus fit is a compliment. <clears throat> uh, like my saying that you didn't get enough attention as a kid so you're trying to make up for it now. Like... <laughs> my god like what can i say like it's actually really oh boy and then my tells her problem her thing where she says that yeah i was the only child i had everything if i kept quiet you know if i actually listened to my mom what my mom said don't do anything don't like you know like uh cause problems and stuff <clears throat> Okay, um, just a sec. Mother said I had to keep out of trouble. We had my yes, political career to think about. We had a controlling mother who had certain expectation. If you're straight from them, you're shut down. That's why you're afraid to care about anything. And, uh, oh boy, and that, that really explains why she's like this. You know, so, so much detached for everything <sighs> and then Zuko tells about obviously we everyone knows about Zuko's problem he he's angry as he said like you know and they're like who are you angry at and Zuko's like I'm angry at myself I don't know what to do and oh boy like as I said, like he actually brought this upon himself and like there were a lot of sections where I actually thought, yes, this time Zuko will definitely change. But 
in a way, I- I'm sure like everyone who's watching this as well at this time was also let down in a way because at least I had so much expectations of Zuko and like you know seeing him develop and going so close to become a good person and then suddenly like you know like reverting back again was in a way as as I said like you know I was also let down and I'm sure a lot of people who was watching this watched this were also let down and I don't blame him for that as I said but still it was a let down and I still think he can change. This it's, it's not too late. I'm sure there's how many episodes are left? Like 15 episodes. Hopefully he changes within this. I think so. He will, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, yeah, and like the thing is that actually kind of I don't know. Like I have like one of my grievances is that he had such a good person with him, Iro who like, tried to teach him so much and tried to make him change so much but he never he never was able to actually realize what his uncle said and was able to like you know go by his words and yeah that's that's the 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 most what can i say disappointing part like he like you know like if if he was just alone no one was there to guide him i would have been like yeah like what else can you do but he had iro with him one of the greatest characters in this show who has so much wisdom so many like you know like life experiences and everything he's 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 the greatest character of this show show iro but still he wasn't able to learn anything and as i said again i don't blame him he has gone through a lot but still i was let down a little bit but I still have hope for Zuko and hopefully he changes because everything is coming out now and I'm sure he himself will realize within I hopefully within the few episodes and I don't know what he'll do after that but let's see and then Azula here we here we actually get to see what Azula also thinks about the whole like you know like what her problem is she says that her mother thought of her to be a monster like and then she says that even though I didn't care about it, but still it hurt. So, like, I don't know what can I say. Like I think, like I've said this before. Like no one is born bad. So I'm I'm guessing like Azula's Azula being a person like this was most probably the influence of his, her father. And I think like I, I think this is also like a uh, like. I don't know most probably because uh zuko's mom was always with zuko and like paid attention to zuko that's why i'm guessing azula become became more of like uh you know like uh, what can i say like his dad her dad probably played paid more attention to her and that's why growing up with her dad she became a person like him and I don't know whether this whole thing would have changed if Zuko's, like, you know, mom and, and Azula's mom, like, you know, actually paid equal attention to both of them. It probably would have changed. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's, like, the problem here. Like, she she never, she she wanted her mom's attention, but she never got that. And that's why I'm guessing she was also somehow jealous of Zuko in a way how you know like her mom was always with zuko and like you know paying attention to him and called her like you know just called her a monster and disregarded him so again i can't find anyone to blame here it's basically bad situation and bad circumstances and i can't say that yeah like you know ozai is uh, the one to blame i can't say that but like what like you know like i i don't think i should do like you know i i can't do that because even though he, i i i think ozai is the biggest reason of azula's personality being like this it was still him that actually paid attention to her when she had no one with her so in a way as a dad as azula's dad i guess ozai probably paid more attention to her than you know like when she was all alone but still, like, you know, he was probably a bad influence on her. And that's why she is a person like this now. Damn. So, yeah. 
like and i think we actually sometimes forget that all these people like you know all these kids here they're kids and you know like it's sad to think about that they have kind of go through this all of these type of messed up situation at such a young age and because of all their experiences from their childhood they are like this now so yeah we'll see like what happens and like this episode here there everyone kind of talked about themselves and everything it was nice to see that as you know so i think probably zuko will realize something from this and hopefully he sits down and thinks about this situation and realizes what he should actually do so yeah anyways and then obviously in the end we see <laughs> them breaking down the party and everything <laughs> that was <laughs> oh boy okay that was this episode it, it was a good great episode that where like you know we actually get to see where what the different characters feel and you know like at the beginning i was like what is this like is this so out of place it is so random but that that was needed definitely for like you know the last portion where they actually talk about themselves and it's always nice to see like you know what the antagonistic characters think what is their life story what is their backstory why are they here how did they get here and everything it's always nice to see you know because so uh, like you know behind every villain there is a circumstances i think a circumstance i think because there must be some reason why people start walking the path of villainy and yeah it's always great to actually listen to them and get to know so yeah that was that episode so that was a great episode let's start the next one this is episode number um six yeah six of after the last airbender book three so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay so here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> okay Okay, so all right, let's take this off in case of any spoilers. Okay, so I'm guessing uh, that episode was uh, more centered towards uh, Ang uh, Azula and all of them. So I'm guessing this episode will be more, uh, we'll see more of Ang and that guy because he, like, Ang is still running away from him. So yeah this episode will probably see how how strong he is we saw he's he's pretty damn strong <laughs> so yeah we'll see all right okay uh the avatar and the fire lord okay <clears throat> fire lord sozin okay yeah I've, I've always wondered about this why did they start the war Summer Solstice. <laughs> What's Zuko doing? Oh. Who? Who? Who's? Wait, who? Who put this here? I don't think there's anyone who would actually put something like this except Iroh, but Iroh is imprisoned. Oh, are they going to meet here? Oh my god. Okay, let's see. Oh! 
My God. My God, Azul. Oh God. <laughs> oh, Tozen's comment. Okay. What? Oh, by old days, so. Okay. All right. All right, here he is. Hmm. Oh no, it's gonna burn. Ooh, secret message. Okay. All right. Damn, that's a cool contraption. <laughs> All right, time to go. Oh, is, is this Sozin statue? Whoa. All right, here we are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hank's so happy. Oh, is this Sultan? Damn. Oh, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> Oops. Damn. <laughs> oh, what? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Nope. Okay, what's happening? Oh. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I forget that Roku is actually like you know from far from the fire nation okay <laughs> okay
Okay. Oh. Oh. Just like how Guru Patik told Ang, but Ang wasn't able to give up. Wow, they were really great friends. Then. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Okay. Gyatso. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Mmm. You need more practice. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Because they're the same, you know, Aftar and Roku, like Ang and Roku. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah, fire because he's fire nation. All right. Mm, look at that. Whoa, whoa. My God. Ha. Ah. Okay. Thud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he became the after. Look at that. Oh. Damn! Whoa! Okay. What? What happened to him? Why did he change this? Oh, okay. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Tom in. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Huh.
Yeah. Oh no, don't. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, he secretly, oh no. Oh God. Great. I doubt he'll be able to do anything. He's an avatar. Yep. Oh, the after state. Oh, my God. God. Oh my God, this, oh. Oh. Oh my Oh no Okay, okay. Oh yeah, he has to stay here Wow, and this is why the whole place got buried underneath and now like, you know, we are here. My God, I, I doubt he can firebend this like this is lava. Oh, just like how Ang did it before. Yeah, okay, here you go. Like making a little creek. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Dragon. Oh. Whoa. There you go. He's bending the whole lava. What? What? Wait, did he like change his mind at the... Okay. Oh no! Oh boy. Okay, so this is a natural volcano. Oh, I thought it was actually something that Sozin did. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh god. I thought he was actually going to help him, but never mind. Oh no, yeah, he decided to... Oh my god. And then comes... Yeah. Oh. oh, that's why. Oh, my God. He had a. And he. Yeah, and he was encased in ice for a hundred years, so that's why he, they weren't able to find him. What rest? Not what, nothing else. Wait, what else did Zuko want to know? Oh yeah, that, okay. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, that thing.
I hope Zuko really changes after this. Please, for God's sake. N no, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, true, true. Yeah, yeah, because he he was Fire Nation. Well, we got. <laughs> Whack him! <laughs> okay, uh, okay, I need to... Okay, that's it. I need to think about something. Just a minute. Zuko's... Um, wait. Zuko's great grandfather of his father's side is, um... Oh, okay. Uh, Zuko's great grandfather of his father's side is Sozin. And Zuko's great grandfather on his mother's side is Roku. That means Roku's daughter is Zuko's mother, and Sozin's son is Zuko's dad. Okay. Okay, it makes sense. So, so he's related to the Avatar in a way. You know, because Roku was the Avatar, he's, he's the Avatar's, uh, Avatar Roku's great grandson. Yeah, not great, grandson? No, wait. It's confusing me, just a sec. No, only grandson, not great grandson. Let me just check that portion again, just a sec. Yeah. No, no, no. Your mother's grandfather was Avatar Roku. Mother's grandfather. Oh, not mother's father. Okay, okay. So, so wait a minute. Mother's grandfather was Roku. That means Roku's uh, granddaughter is okay. Great grandfather. That means. All right. Sozin, and then uh, okay, Sozin, and then comes that I, I forgot his name. Um, the other the, the guy who was uh, uh, Ozai's dad, I forgot his name. Sozin, him, Ozai, Zuko, and um, Roku, that's someone in the middle, uh, uh, Zuko's mom, Zuko, okay, okay, it's, it's something like that. Oh, so, well, so that means Azula is also related to the Avatar. <laughs> God, okay, I was not expecting that, really. Like, I really was not expecting um, those, um, Roku uh, being actually related to Zuko. Wow, that was unexpected. Okay, so here we get the whole backstory of Sozin and Zuko. And, and, not Zuko, what the hell. Uh, Sozin and Roku. And, like... At times I actually forget that Roku was, you know, Fire Nation. At the beginning, I'd actually forgotten for a second that Roku was Fire Nation. I, I was like, you know, watching the whole thing play out and I was like, oh, so, uh, the, like, you know, like, uh, uh, Roku also had like a Fire Nation friend, just like how Aang had a Fire Nation friend, you know. Uh, you remember that guy Kuzan and that uh, uh, Aang said? I was thinking like, oh, wow, that's kind of like, you know, same. And then by the middle of it, I actually realized that, wait a minute, like Roku was Fire Nation from the beginning. So it's obvious that he has friends in the Fire Nation because he was Fire Nation from the beginning. <laughs> For a moment there, I actually forgot that Roku was Fire Nation. And uh, yeah, okay. So here we get to see the whole story. And um, the one who actually sent the letter to um, Zuko was um, Iroh. Now I wonder, how did Iroh send the letter? You know, because who helped him? Iroh was imprisoned. So how was he able to get that in front of? Is someone working with Iroh? Who knows? We'll see, probably. Probably it will be explained later on. Or maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe Iroh like nabbed some key and he, he just like, you know, <laughs> has the key with him. He kind of 
like uh, unlocks the door, goes outside, puts that uh, like you know uh, in that hallway, and then goes back again, locks himself in, and sits down. Yeah, like I, it it wouldn't surprise me like if I did something like that. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get an explanation. Um, okay, so the whole backstory here, and we get to see how they are connected, and now here's the thing we get to see how roku like you know uh, learns about uh, being the avatar and when he comes back he, he thinks that yeah sozin has not changed but he did change i don't know what made him change like this and i'm sure if uh, like you know if roku actually remained alongside sozin all this time he, if he did not go uh, to train to become the avatar maybe maybe we would have had a bit like you know a different future because i'm sure something happened um, probably like you know he got this weird idea as we saw like you know him actually saying that uh like we are so much like you know in, in like you know we're so better nowadays so why don't we expand you know it's so, like this whole idea came in his head if 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 roku was with him all along i'm sure like you know roku would have probably tried to stop it and like you know kind of stopped him at the beginning but in a way i think it wouldn't even matter because someone like you know like if something comes to someone's head even if you actually try to stop him or her they will still go on with it just like how we see how roku did try to stop him even though it was late he did say that don't you dare think about this ever again you know we won't uh like you know expand we won't do anything like that he said that and but still he went along like you know he went along his plan so i think probably even though like you know like i think even if roku was with him all along someday i'm sure sozin would have done this sooner or later so yeah i don't think it would have mattered anyways but yeah it's just that people you know like how they are from the inside just like how tough in the end said so like is everyone bad here but ang said that no like you're, you're you're mistaking the point here the point was not that like roku's point was not to show that uh fire nation are bad his point was to show that even though uh sozin and i are both fire nation we went like you know alongside different paths which are completely opposite to each other one of us was like you know went through the right path another took the wrong path so that was his point and in a way this whole contrast is really like you know like it is, this is such a great comparison to zuko how he's also struggling with which path to take and yeah like it's done such in such a great way okay so the whole uh like you know backstory we see we can see that like you know how like you know roku lived his life uh he he also knew uh like you know uh mong Gyatso, and they were friends and like you know the last like you know, in the last scene when top says that do friendships really last you know uh even like, you know to different lives uh like we saw that you know we saw how mong Gyatso and roku and now mong Gyatso and ang they're friends so yeah it does last a lifetime like you know even past lives okay and uh, i'm i i'm really like you know i think i'm not sure do they have like the stories for the different avatars for example roku and uh, you know all the other different avatars uh kyoshi and maybe maybe they're like i'm not sure like i think they should have like their stories as well but like you know we kind of got a little glimpse of it maybe they have some other comic or something i'm not sure i'm not even sure i, I think a after uh, the last airbender is a comic like the ram main source material is a comic isn't it or is it like a tv show i need to check this out I'll, I'll check it out later on like what the actual source material is but yeah i'm sure they have some kind of a like, you know different spin-off story or something i'm sure it ha like has something like that but yeah because like you know seeing this episode i can feel that they have something you know uh they have probably have some kind of spin-off because this whole like you know backstory was very detailed so i'm sure they have some kind of spin-off 
which probably tells us the tale of Roku and some like you know and all, all the different avatars as well who came before Aang. So yeah. Anyways, okay. So yeah. So here we see uh, the whole conflict and now another thing I think was probably the reason why Sozin again as I said like you know I doubt Sozin would have changed but Roku could have probably delayed or like you know probably try to change his mind but I think another thing that uh, Roku should have done is like kept contact with Sozin but as he says that Sozin and I didn't speak or see each other for 25 years after our battle this thing again uh, I think this thing again was probably the reason why like you know like 25 years like like within this 25 years like I'm sure Sozin thought and thought and thought and he probably came to the decision like yeah like I need to do this I need to attack all the other nations and I need to seize control so I don't know if something would have changed I doubt anything would have changed even if uh, Roku talked with him or kept contact with him but you know still and uh, then we see the last thing. okay now here's the thing at the beginning here during the whole volcanic eruption uh i thought that it was actually that sozin attacked them or something you know i wasn't able to realize at the beginning and then i actually realized by the end of it that no it was not sozin who attacked them it was the natural volcano erupting so it was not Sozin. So I think Sozin was, you know, standing there. He saw the volcano erupting and he realized that this is a chance. And he took the chance and he, you know, got there. And I don't know, at, at the beginning he was helping him. And at that moment, I also thought that, okay, maybe it will actually go somewhere different. Maybe they'll actually help each other. And I don't know, like, maybe, like, by the end of it, we'll see that Sozin was actually a good person. But the people who came after Sozin, they, they became bad. I thought it would go in something like in this direction. And I thought maybe, like, you know, this uh, Zuko will read this and Zuko will be like, oh, my great grandfather was also someone who helped uh, the Avatar. You know, he was also a good person and he would change, like, you know, his mind and become a, like, you know, try to become a better person or something. I thought it was going to go in that direction as soon as I saw Sozin was helping uh, Roku. But then, like, like, you know, like, he just by the end of it he just changed he was like you know what i see i can see the future where you are not there in this world and i think like you know like my dreams will come true in that future so yeah and then he goes away and in the end we also see the dragon you know the big dragon also i'm guess like you know it also kind of laid alongside uh roku because you know like he's dying so it decided to actually follow uh, him you know uh follow him to the other world and yeah like loyalty and then we see ang being born so now here's the thing this whole scene sequence you know this whole backstory when i saw i i was like after I saw, just as I saw, I was like, oh my god, Sozin was, like, you know, like, Sozin was, like, a morally conflicted character, and by the end, he decided to betray, uh, you know, like, betray uh, Roku, even though Roku helped him and gave him a chance, just like how Toph, like, you know, thought about the whole situation. I was also of the same, like, thing. I was like, 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 you know, I thought that, yeah, this is what they were trying to say, that Sozin, like, you know, the, the actual reason why they showed us this flashback, was to show us how Sozin was, uh, like, you know, a bad person. But then, as soon as Toph said that, and Ang said that no, and Ang told his point of view, I also realized that, yeah, that's probably what, like, you know, so, uh, Roku actually did try to tell Ang. Like, don't, like, you know, he did not try to tell Ang that, like, Sozin's a bad person. That was not the point of this whole flashback. The point of this whole flashback is to show how people, even from the same Fire Nation, can be so different. It's not that Fire Nation is bad. It's that the certain people in Fire Nation are bad. That's it. Fire Nation equal bad? No, that's not it. 
Some people in the Fire Nation are bad and they are the reason why everything is happening and we need to stop them to get back the peace. And like for Aang, this was the whole point, you know, for Aang and for Toph and all of them. For Zuko, this, is, this brings out a completely different point. For Zuko, this brings out the point that even though you're Fire Nation, you can still choose the right path. You don't have to follow your like, you know, pre-carved destiny. You can make your own destiny, which is different and which you think is correct. And that's what Iroh said in the end, you know, like, uh, like, like you can change this. Just like how Roku, you know, like walked the right path, even though Sozin started walking the wrong path, you can become someone like that as well. But you yourself need to realize that you, you yourself need to change. And, Here's the thing, uh, where is it? <clears throat> what happened generations ago can be resolved now by you. Because of your legacy, you alone clean cleanse the sins of our family and the Fire Nation. Born in you along with all this strife is the power to restore balance to the world. You know, like seeing this whole thing, like I will explain this thing to him. I think um, if uh, Zuko actually got proper guidance, Zuko could have also been like, you know, been the avatar. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, I'm saying like proper guidance, like the way he was brought up and he the way he is now, it wouldn't have worked. But I'm sure after this, he'll change. And he also kind of has that whole thing of what can i say like he has the qualities of becoming the avatar as well uh, like you know uh, zuko i don't know why but i kind of feel something like this like it like you know like he, like i wonder if i wonder something has there ever been a bad avatar like all the avatars are good aren't they so like what what would happen if like you know if someone became the avatar and that person was like you know what yeah, I won't restore balance. I won't help save the world. I'll destroy the world. Can this even happen? Or is there like some kind of uh, thing inside the after that? Yeah, this will never happen. You know, this is impossible to happen. Who knows? Like it suddenly came into my mind. Like I, I'm thinking like, what, what would happen if there's a bad after? It would be kind of interesting to see, you know, like the Avatar trying to destroy the world and all the all the nations like, you know, working together to stop him. <laughs> kind of interesting. I don't know. But anyways, that's something different. I'm just like, you know, thinking about. But yeah, anyways. And yeah, like now Zuko, you know, like Iroh handed him over that, that thing. And hopefully from the next episode, we see Zuko a changed person. And... <laughs> I'm really like you know I'm I'm really betting on that. I'm sure he will become a changed person because the way that the story is going is kind of going towards that direction. So yeah, hopefully let's see, let's wait for it. And in the end, we see like you know Ang and them talking and Dov saying that do friendships last more than one lifetime? <laughs> and yeah, they're like why not? And Saka's like scientifically speaking, there's no way to prove her. <laughs> Katara's like, shut up and just hold the hand. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, wow, that was great. That was a fantastic episode. Wow. So yeah, we got the background, the backstory of everything. And yeah, that was fantastic. That's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This was my reaction to After the Last Airbender, episode num uh, book three, episode number five and six. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out so yeah so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of after the last airbender so until then goodbye and have a nice day